What's up guys, it's Michael here. In this video, we are going to talk about does increasing the minimum wage is beneficial or and actually a deficit for the working class. So let's get right into it. Before I continue this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and also click on the bell notification icon so YouTube will notify you when I upload a new video. So let's get into it. So I recently read this article called Investopedia and also Britannica.org which is looking at the pros and cons of articles and especially this one where it's currently publicly and politically debated where the minimum wage should be increased or not. So the mainly the one I'm looking at is proandcons.org from Britannica because that one gives out the most detailed information. There is no right or wrong answer. If you're looking at the most accurate answer, it's actually somewhere in the middle. So after watching this video, remember always to think, by, think for yourself and always remember, there's, uh, you know, your answer is not right or wrong. You're just basically trying to find the best one. So there are 15 of pros and cons and it's gonna be a long video. Timestamps will be down below. I'd be really appreciate if you click the like button and subscribe button by now. So let's get into it. So pro number one, raising a minimum wage will increase economic activity and spur job growth. And this article, con number one, increasing the minimum wage would force businesses to lay off employees and raise unemployment levels. So the answer actually is in the middle. So when you increase the minimum wage, they saying for pro one, increase economic activity and spur job growth. First, you gotta understand what do people do when they get increase in minimum wage. So the best example of this is you look at the stimulus check back in 2020, 2021, when people got that extra $1,400 back from the government, which is taxpayers' money, still their own money. What did they do with it? Based on the United States economic sector and how the people consume, we are considered as a consumer sector. So what majority of the people do, they took the stimulus checks and spent it. And a con says it will lead businesses to lay off employees and raise unemployment levels. That is also true, but it's partially true. Same as the last one. In that point, in case, you got to look at what type of businesses are mainly affected. So they're looking at more unskilled labor, more low-end jobs. So you break it down to three sectors. You got the low-end, you got the medium, and you got the high-end. High-end, you look at Apple and Amazon. Amazon will break into multiple sectors. There are people who doing statistics, math, analytics. Those are making way more than minimum wage, so it's not gonna be affected. But the ones that are doing packaging and doing the lowering sector, which is delivering, those will be the ones be affected because Amazon, like every other business, has a fiduciary duty to increase their revenue and provide to their shareholders. That's based on their model. There are also different type of models, but that is their main one currently. So in that case, the right answer is yes, it can increase economic activity and at the same time, it can make people lose more jobs. It really depends on the type of business. Going down to number two, we are looking at pro number two, which is increasing the minimum wage would reduce poverty. Con number two, which is the opposite, raising a minimum wage would increase poverty. So first, you gotta look at what is poverty? What is the definition of poverty? Poverty is anyone who is living under the standard of living for their living conditions. So you got this will be based on every country and it'll be based on differently. So every country has a different poverty level. For example, you know, India, Africa, their poverty line is different compared to like, let's say Europe and America, because based on inflation, based on how much things cost, what does it take the standard of living? It really defines what the laws define there. So would it reduce, you know, raise the minimum wage, reduce poverty level? Yes and no. So if you look at it this way, how does it reduce poverty? You make, you know, double the amount minimum wage and at the same time, is the businesses have to leverage that. So more people have to basically hunt for jobs and businesses will hire less, especially the small businesses. The small businesses are the ones affected most. Those are the ones that take the hardest impact. The medium size and large size, not as much. So if you look at that way, if you raise the minimum wage, yes, they'll be at a poverty level, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter. Why is that? The only way to really find the right answer between raising minimum wage 
and increasing poverty level, how does it relate is how much taxes do you have to pay? And why I say taxes? Because each time you make money, some of it goes back to the government. At the same time, if maybe if you lower, let's say, property tax, maybe lower income tax, maybe lower sales tax altogether, for example, California, if they lower all that, then your poverty level will be reduced. So it's a trade-off. It's a balance. You have to find that balance. Moving on to number three. So pro number three, a higher minimum wage would reduce government welfare spending. Con number three, a minimum wage increase would hurt businesses and force companies to close. So let's look at pro number three first. Pro is always first, con is always second. So you look at it, then how would it reduce government welfare spending? Yes and no. So yes, if the first part, if you look at the first part, you know, look at it through where they make more money, you don't need to rely on more government spending. Then my question is, how do people interact with spending in general? Do they save, do they invest? Then, you know, that's from the previous answer I mentioned. It's most likely they're still gonna use government welfare spending because that is what their mindset is. It's based on how people's habits are. Whether they change it or not, it's up to them. Con number three is a minimum wage when force businesses and force companies to close. That is also true because those are mainly affect, like I mentioned earlier, small businesses are the one gonna take the hardest hit. They need their employees such as waiters, cooks, those are the ones that'll be affected the most. Large businesses, it doesn't matter. Like, okay, raise minimum wage, it doesn't really matter because they're already paying most of the people above minimum wage anyways. Moving down to number four. Minimum wage has not kept up with inflation. Pro four. Con four. Raising the minimum wage will increase the price of consumer goods. This one is really interesting because it is talking about now the fight between inflation. So you raise minimum wage, inflation is always going to be there, an average of 2% a year, and only exception will be these past couple of years. And raising a minimum wage will not keep on inflation. Well, inflation is always going to be there, so are you going to keep increasing the minimum wage? you got to ask yourself that. That's basically not going to work. You have to fight inflation another method. Increasing wages is only temporary solution. And raising minimum wage increases the price of consumer goods. This is a yes and also a no. Increasing the wage, meaning they have multiple options. So businesses is not, you know, deadlocked to one option. They you have to remember when you run a business, you have a bunch of options you can choose from. Especially if you are the business owner, you don't have to stick with one option. So raise the price on consumer goods. Yes, that is an option they could take. For example, restaurant owners, maybe Amazon, big businesses. That's a maybe, but most of the time they would try to appease the consumer and do the opposite. Just instead of, instead of hiring more employees, they'll just fire the employees or lay them off. Basically, another version of firing. So increase price of consumer goods. Mm, yes, if they're really huge, they'll do the opposite. Instead of hiring more employees, they're gonna hire less employees. That's the trade. And it really depends on which industry too. Which industry will in fact be affected the most? Most likely you're probably looking at fast food. Fast food, the really small businesses are the ones that require the most physical labor. There's a lot of questions to be asked and there's a lot to be answered. So make sure you take a look at the article down below yourself and think for yourself. Because whatever I say in here is not covering everything. It's going down to pro and con number five. Pro number five, improvements in productivity and economic growth have outpaced increased the minimum wage. Con number five, teenagers and young adults may be shut out the workforce and minimum wage is increased. Yes and no. So improvements in productivity. You're telling me someone who's working minimum wage job and it's most likely they don't like it and you increase it to let's say double the amount. You're saying that they would have you know, a better mindset and working there. If they, let's put it this way, if you're already working there, your mindset is usually not great, majority of them. And based on the stats, they probably, you know, probably pretty biased out there. If you're working on something they don't like, and it doesn't apply for every job, but they like their job, then that's a different story. If they don't like their job, that's another story. But based on what I see myself, most of them do not like their job. So even increasing the minimum wage doesn't mean it'll be better. And you look at Con 5, which as teenagers, young adults might be shut out the workforce and minimum wage increase, I'm more lean towards more this side, on the con side, because that is true. 
because you've increased minimum wage, it relates to back to four, three, two, and one, is that if you increase minimum wage, they might hire less employees. It really depends on the business. Moving on to pro number six, increasing the minimum wage would reduce income inequality. Con number six, raising the minimum wage workers would put up a disadvantage for low skill workers. <sighs> this one, I have to say it's more somewhere in the middle. So increasing minimum wage would reduce income inequality. Uh, no, because first of all, who makes most of the profits is the one who owns the business. Number two, minimum wage and income inequality, they don't really, really relate. Ain't gonna, I hate to break it to you. Because if you raise the minimum wage, the income inequality is still gonna be there. Because businesses are finding, are always trying to find a way to make more profits. No matter what. So they go by within the law, they try to make it better. If you push it too far, then you have less innovation. And income inequality is based on what type of job you do. If you want those people from the low end to make more money, they have to find a better skilled job, whether the market likes it or not, and they have to perform that level. Because you're telling me a bread worker or a bread maker that say, you know, not to shame on them, bread makers can make a lot of money too. Their specialty, like the ones you find on Facebook to make specialty cakes and people find out they're really good. But like restaurant workers, waiters, you're telling me you want to, you know, decrease the gap. The only way for them to do it is to make the skill more valuable. Raising minimum wage is not the answer to that one. And also, looking at con, con is partially wrong too, because raising minimum wage would give a disadvantage to low skill workers. Low skill workers are already at a disadvantage. Raising minimum wage doesn't really change anything. Because they're still at the end, gotta be in a disadvantage. If you, like what I mentioned before, if you really wanna help them the most, why not lower taxes? Property tax, income tax, sales tax maybe change their you know education system teach them more about finance if you teach them more about finance then like for example this video make sure to click the subscribe button down below so i can do more topics like these looking at pro and con number seven a minimum wage increase would help reduce race and gender inequality okay so this one's getting closer to political con number seven increase the minimum wage reduces likelihood of upward mobility okay First of all, minimum wage, you're saying race and gender inequality. That was more of a back then, in the 1900s, you know, around that time. Fine. Their workforce labor is more different. And the reason why is, you put it this way, why they said, gender, you know, race and gender inequality, you think about it. What else other country around the world would pay a minimum wage this high? Besides Europe, okay, Europe doesn't count. But if you look at countries like China, countries like India, Vietnam, those, those minimum wage is way, way lower. So their standard of living is way lower too. That's why they don't have to pay as much. And reduce inequality, um, I hate to break it to you. If you raise minimum wage, businesses can always hire foreigners too, the ones that don't officially live in America. They can always do that too. That's part of the law. That won't fix anything. So for Pro 7, that is you know pretty obsolete. That argument there is not that great, not that strong. You look at Con 7. Increasing minimum wage reduces likelihood of upward mobility. Uh, that is half true and half false. Yes, they're saying that if you increase the minimum wage, people are more likely to stay there. But it doesn't really matter if taxes increase. If taxes increase, and like for example sales tax property tax they're still gonna be exactly the same spot where they started off from going down to number eight pro number eight increasing the minimum wage would have a rippling effect in raising the incomes of people who make slightly above the minimum wage okay okay fine fair deal con number eight if the minimum wage is increased companies may use more robots and automatic processes to replace service employees. Ooh, so this one's pretty interesting. So raising minimum wage will have a ripple effect for pro. Okay, raising incomes for people who make slightly above minimum wage. Uh, yes, but at the same time, it is most likely their wages would stagnate because 
First of all, when you are an employee, your goal is to make money and provide service and tasks for the company to off trade for them to make more money elsewhere. So, would it raise make them slightly above the minimum wage? Yes and no. Most likely, their income will not go any higher than that. If it is, then probably inflation has probably caught up already. And, you know, raise, raising the wages for 28 million Americans, based on what this article said, will have a ripple effect and will not be that great. And whether the consumer spending will be higher or not, it really depends on people. I would say yes, people would spend more money, but at the same time, they'll end up back where we started and will not go anywhere. You're just create, you know, creating a loop. Now, this one's more interesting. Con number eight saying that companies may use more robots to automate the processes to replace service employees. Okay, so you look at one example of this. The ones that enter, for example, let's say parking lots. When you enter parking lots, it used to be a person there issuing tickets to go and park in a parking lot. Now, have you noticed now that most of them are now becoming robotic automated? So that is one example of employees being replaced, even increase the minimum wage or not. Now they're saying this might be companies may use more, meaning that they will already implement this faster. So for example, the pandemic, while everyone started working in the office, they're now working all at home. Increase the pace of it. Yes, that is true, but at the same time, it's already happening. And where it happened faster or not, it really depends on the businesses. So whether or not they like it or not, they say increase the speed, but in my experience, it's already happening. Because most of the things that could be replaced with robotics, for example, farming will be one of them. So instead of farming a massive field, more and more people are doing indoor farming because electricity is becoming cheaper and water is becoming more expensive. Going down to pro number nine, increasing the minimum wage would reduce worker pro uh, increase, no, my bad, would increase worker productivity and reduce employee turnover. Hmm, interesting. Okay, con number nine. Increasing the federal minimum wage would disproportionately harm the poorest areas of the United States. Okay, let's look at pro number nine. Increase minimum wage would increase worker productivity and reduce employee turnover. Okay, mm, that's a maybe. That's really a maybe too. It's really iffy. If I had to choose one, I would most likely say no for my opinion. But based on what this article said, trying to be the most, you know, non-biased as possible, somewhere in the middle, that's my motto, is when they increase the minimum wage, productivity would increase. So let's put it this way. If someone works in their job, let's say it's a waiter and the place, the, the people, the customers and clients that come in are not really friendly the majority of the time, and the turnover rate, they're or you know reduce employee turnover most likely they really don't like their job rate and most likely want to move to another one they're still going to move to another one that's not going to change the fact of that and employee turnover well um that's most likely a false too because if the minimum wage increased by that much by twice let's say two times the amount that's what they're pushing for they can always find another job too so wouldn't it be uh, employee turnover also if they find another job that pays the same maybe easier or maybe not as stressful or maybe they don't have to take that much crap from work same thing you gotta ask yourself that would that work so for employee worker turnover the pro side is not looking too great for number nine now con number nine increasing the federal minimum wage would disproportionately harm the poorest areas in the united states that's that's a yes and a no too because when you increase the minimum wage how does it harm the poor, poorest is basically not as hiring as many people. But at the same time, a fewer amount of people will have increased standard of living for a short period of time, basically temporary until inflation or taxes raises. Once those goes up, then it doesn't matter if you have an increased minimum wage, you're still gonna be exactly the same where you are. Looking at pro number 10, the current minimum wage is not high enough to allow people to afford housing. Okay, fair. Con number 10, raising the minimum wage will increase housing costs. Fair too. <clears throat> so, number 10, increasing minimum wage because the minimum wage is not high enough to allow people to afford housing. Well, pretty simple answer to that is housing crisis, especially throughout the United States because there are not enough houses being built. As a realtor myself, I can let you know that there are not enough houses being built. It's actually be becoming less and less. And the reason why is people want to keep their housing property values high. It's based on how people are voting and policies. 
and it's based on how our policies are being implemented. So we look at really nice areas by the beach. Like you look at Texas, you look at Austin areas close by water. And especially in California, Oregon, Washington, you realize areas by water are worth more money than areas are more inland. It's because water is a necessity of life and land and location is, dictates the value's property. So if you have more wealthy people in the area, they usually want to keep their houses very, very expensive. If you want them to share the area, do you need to make multi-housing family units? And you have to make more of them and they're not making enough of them. And no reason why they can't afford it, like I mentioned earlier, taxes. Property tax itself is very high. So let's say, oh, look, Texas or Texas pay a really high property tax, but their houses are like, what, 300,000? So you take like one point whatever, I think 1.7 something percent of a $300,000 house, $300, house versus let's say California. Oh, our property tax is not as high, but you're, let's say theirs is like, uh, California, it's like, let's say 0.75, that's estimating from there, or one or 1%. One but 1% of what? 1% of 2 million, 1% of 3 million versus 1.7% of like 300,000. That's the trade right there. That's the answer you are looking for right there, somewhere in the middle. So whether or not you can afford or not, it really dictates whether or not housing crisis. Minimum wage will not solve that problem. Solving housing crisis, which is building more and changing how zoning regulations work will solve that problem. And you look at con 10, or increase housing costs. Raising minimum wage, or increase housing costs, wrong too. They are both wrong if you look at pro and con number 10. Because raising it and lowering it wouldn't make a difference. It's still gonna be very expensive to own a home in really high-end designated areas. Because the reason why they're high-end designated areas is because a lot of people want to live in that area, period. So only way to fix that, multi-housing units, and I like mentioned more, building more houses, which is Apparently, compare, I believe there's a graph showing that back in around 2005 until now, 2022, California, 180,000 houses built, homes built, single family units to multi-family residential properties to apartments. And now, back then, their goal is 180K. They're building around, I believe, 120K back in 2005. And now they're down only to 20K during the pandemic. So raising minimum wage, pros and cons for this, one is obsolete. They're both wrong. Looking at pro number 11. <laughs> the current minimum wage is not high enough to allow people to afford everyday essentials. Okay, fair enough. Con number 11. The free market should determine minimum wage is not the federal government. Okay, that one's a little bit interesting too. So minimum wage is not enough to allow people to afford everyday essentials. So you look at this case look at inflation inflation is always gonna happen and you look at how much food prices are food prices are dictate by what is created what how is it imported so it means supply and demand so if you can make more food than it's need to be consumed then the prices will drop and America itself can produce a lot of food we can actually produce way more than we eat it happens all the time look at Las Vegas go to casinos and buffets people eat so much food but most of the time they don't finish it just throw it away that's one good example of it. And also when you make the food, it depends on transportation and is it perishable? Perishable meaning is how long can it last on store shelves before it has to be thrown away? So if those two can be, those two equations and problems can be solved, then you have lower food costs. And also plays in policy too. When you buy food, you have to pay sales tax. Some states, I believe like Tennessee, do not have to pay sales tax in Oregon Actually, no, maybe not Tennessee. I think it's Oregon. Oregon don't have to pay sales tax. And yeah, over there, food well, don't have to pay tax and you buy it, then yeah, it'll be cheaper. But also, but the main part besides sales tax is transportation, moving, getting all the food you need, transfer from one place to another. So the best way to negate that is to have local farms, the local farms around the area grow them. Because when they grow them, their transportation cost is a lot lower. Let's say growing, let's say you gotta get food to Oregon and California. But your oranges are grown in Florida. So if you're moving literally across multiple states, all the way transport, all the way there. So that's where your cost is, is to find a way to reduce costs. It's basically start growing them more locally and grow them more efficiently. That's where robotics will come in, indoor farming will come in, and policies such as sales tax has to come in and help too. Increasing the minimum wage 
would only partially solve this problem. And free market should determine minimum wages, not the federal government. If you look at that for, let's say, consumer goods and eating costs, in that case, I believe, yes. Government could help in too. They should have some intervention, but not too much intervention. Going down to number 12. We are almost done. Almost at 15. Pro number 12. Raising the minimum wage would lead to a healthier population and prevent premature deaths. What? Are you serious? Con number 12. Raising minimum wage would decrease employee benefits and increase tax payments. Um, <clears throat> both of them's a yes and a no. Okay, let's look at pro number 12. Prevent premature deaths in a healthier population. So if you're playing it this way, um, if you increase minimum wage, okay, you still have to, you know, workers still provide insurance. As for how efficient and how big an insurance, it really depends on the company. Small businesses most likely got to be a lot less compared to like major corporations like Amazon, Google, Apple. And medium businesses somewhere in the middle will probably, depending on the place, probably decent insurance too. And healthier population, premature deaths, that would really depend on the person. Let's put it that way. So let's say that you get, you get a higher minimum wage and you get you know, benefit or insurance, but you still don't see a doctor every year for a blood test, or you have some, there's something wrong with you, and you don't still don't see a doctor even involved insurance. Then wouldn't that still count as a premature death? Just saying, minimum wage only plays a portion of it, and people still have to see doctors. It's just how it is, and raising minimum wage would not solve that problem completely. Honestly. It's just kind of kind of pointless raising the minimum wage will, will lead to a healthier population. Psychologically, that's a maybe too. And look at con number 12. Raising minimum wage would decrease employee benefits and increase tax payments. Okay, um, increased tax payments, that is always happening. So I have to say con number 12 is wrong also, partially wrong, because government always trying to increase taxes no matter what. Increase minimum wage happens or not. It's still happening. So that negates the purpose. Decrease employee benefits. That is a maybe too. A maybe will only affect small businesses, but for large businesses, they don't care. It's still the same. Their benefits, because they have all the connections already with all the major insurances. So that increase in minimum wage wouldn't really change much of anything. So looking at pro and con number 12, they're both wrong. Pro number 13. Raising the minimum wage will increase school attendance and decrease high school dropout rates. What? Okay. Con number 13. Raising the minimum wage will decrease high school enrollment rates and increase dropout rates. Okay, they're both opposite of each other. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. That will really depend on whether or not small businesses, usually not the large ones, would hire high school. High school employees so it really depends on them and it depends on the state too do they allow how long or allow high school high schoolers to work as employees um that's a yes and a no so first you gotta look at who is benef who is benefiting from this so how do schools make money that's the question right there needs to be asked that's hidden between these two so how do schools make money? They make money by getting grants and federal grants from the state and federal government. So more students that attend school and more of them basically do not drop out of school, they make more money. Now, would it decrease high school dropout rates? That will really depend on the student and the location. So let's say a more poor neighborhood is more likely to have more students drop out. Either or. So if it increased the minimum wage, I had to lean towards more the pro side because if it's a more you know poor neighborhood, most likely they will drop out and try to go. F they think that's more sustained living, which at the end, like I said, inflation and increase in taxes will eventually catch up with them. And you look at a con side, you'll say high school will decrease their enrollment rates. Was that true? Yes, that is also true, because like I mentioned earlier, it will, especially in poor neighborhoods, that increase their chances for them to drop out high school and go attend a work the workforce so i lean towards more towards the con side but at the same time is high schools actually make less money so why i say the more you know poor neighborhoods because they need money so that's the best place to do it 
for this effect the mid and the high-end neighborhoods most of them do not need financial support in those type of neighborhoods so those the medium and high-end it doesn't really affect them too much increasing minimum wage or not might maybe it might affect them but not a lot most of the time going down to number 14 two more to go raising minimum wage would help reduce the federal deficit uh, okay Con number 14, the raising minimum wage would encourage companies to outsource jobs to countries where a cost would be lower. Ha <laughs> ha, they're both right and they're both wrong at the same time. So, pro number 14, raising the minimum wage will help reduce federal deficit. Um, ooh, workforce, if you increase minimum wage, you're meaning, you're telling me that you are going to tax the crap out of them after increase the minimum wage. Okay, I mean, you're already doing that already. That's not really gonna change too much. So, increasing minimum wage, reduce federal deficit. Not really, because at the end, you're losing, you're, you're going to lose employees, and at the same time, you're increasing taxes. So, that's not really gonna change anything. And you look at the con, raising minimum wage would encourage companies to outsource jobs to countries where it costs to be lower. It's already happening. You look at big companies like Amazon, Tesla, Apple. They're already outsourcing jobs already. Raising minimum wage is not going to change any difference. They're already outsourcing already because like I mentioned in one of the previous ones before, I forgot which number it was it, but they're already outsourcing jobs. They're making it either A, you're making it all autom automated using electronics, robotics, for example, ticket dispensers, maybe uh, traffic cops to use some electronic making most of our goods like t-shirts and stuff electronics like computer parts even car parts and most of them are outsourced and most of our parts are sourced from different parts of the world because it's cheaper there maybe to have better quality it's something there because it's not all manufactured in america and raising minimum wage doesn't really affect it too much because it's already happening and most of the people are making those parts you know, even to raise the minimum wage is not going to really change a difference because it's not built in America already. So that negates both pro and con number 14. Both are pretty much really a topic to try to debate. It's pretty much useless, obsolete. Pro number 15 and con number 15. Finally, the last one. Raising the minimum wage would reduce crime. Okay, that one's more interesting. Con number 15. Raising the minimum wage would not reduce crime. Uh, okay. Crime itself, no, it's a really touchy topic. At the same time, there's a lot of factors to it. Minimum wage is only a portion of how it could be answered. So raising a minimum wage for reduced crime, that you, basically going back to the poor neighborhoods. So mainly this article and minimum wage political debate, it's really targeting the more of the poor sector, the more wealthy sector. And you know, all of these right here doesn't really affect them too much. It's usually small businesses and the poor areas. So reduce crime, raising minimum wage. Mm, pretty good chance yes it can reduce crime it can remember i said can right here because like i mentioned if you raise the minimum wage but you still increase taxes for example sales tax properties tax all sorts of other taxes come in if you do not reduce those which is handled by government you're gonna be back to square one where you started you're looking at con saying it would not reduce crime that is where i mentioned earlier that's how it would not reduce crime because if inflation catches up which it probably will because thanks to all the spending and not investing happening not within the people and within the government you're still gonna be back to square one so looking all you know pros and cons all 15 of them at the end the answer to all of them is somewhere in the middle they're they're not 100 percent wrong and they're not 100 percent right they're within 50 50 as i all mentioned earlier so this covers the topic of whether or not increasing minimum wage is you know the right way to go or the wrong way to go you have to judge that for yourself and it really depends how you look at it always use other topics as examples don't use only my video look at other countries around the world how do they treat it and also you gotta look at how ethnicity works you gotta look at how people's work ethic works, how their spending habits works, because it changes from country to country. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll post more topics like these. If you like more topics like these, please comment down below so I can go look at more financial topics that can be partially political and partially financial, because it help you answer certain questions and help you think through whether or not that 
like topics like these minimum wage should be increased or not. See you guys next time. I hope you enjoy.